Well, the brief was, let's put it this way, to give you a whole load of data and statistics, which you've probably already seen on our website, which actually show you that we're really a great department. But frankly, I want to try and do something different. So in terms of, you know, my what I feel about this department, what kind of a place we're at, we're certainly strategic, we're always changing to circumstances. We looked at uh, the archaeology of graffiti and post boxes and we did ev everything else in between. There were uh, three trips integrated into it, so you went out, we saw an Iron Age hill fort, we saw Roman things and we saw um, castles as well, so you sort of, you get to see so much stuff and it was really great to see that overview and follow everything through in a single area. I, I, I always tell students, um, don't worry about Jurassic Park, it's a complete waste of time. Pleistocene Park, <laughs> with <laughs> mammoth, cave lion, huge hyenas, mm -hmm. um, bison two and a half yards high at the shoulder, aurochs to mm -hmm. come back to them, giant deer with atlas four yards wide. I'm used to a very theoretical and conceptual background, but being forced into a more analytical, critical, scientific environment, it's really reinforced the way that I think and interact in regards to conservation. An analogy would be our use of flowers on graves. Um, we might question, do we have a socially normative understanding of why we do that? I think that we do it because it's traditional. Uh, and we don't clearly understand what they symbolise. And if you asked many different people, they would come up with many different answers for what these flowers meant to them. So can't reduce to just one meaning. But I'm generally interested in the medieval world. Um, I stray into the Romans, particularly through digging at Winchester, and I'm increasingly interested in post medieval things. Revelation, investigation, and preservation, RIP. That basically we are interested in preserving the evidence that comes up from excavations. I work in the um, North Atlantic region, looking at um, the interaction between humans and their environment in places such as the Western Isles of Scotland, uh, Orkney and Shetland, and also Faroes, Iceland and Greenland. At the moment my research is focusing on Iron Age Oppida, which are these large monuments that occur at the very end of the Iron Age, which many people regard as being the first urbanism in Europe. The historical source is about leprosy, about it being a stigmatising or a kind of um, unholy disease and they use that to stigmatize sufferers today. So by actually going back and looking at the medieval archaeology we might be able to dispel some of these uh, misconceptions. But what's even more fascinating is seeing how life in Egypt actually went ahead in order to produce those kind of monuments. So I'm looking at the at Egypt from the bottom up and I think that's where my main interest lies. One of the things I'm really excited about that we've just recently acquired is this um, a DJI Phantom 4 drone. Um, drones are being used in archaeology increasingly to kind of map large scale landscapes and also take really nice aerial pictures of sites and things. They help a lot with interpretation, um, but they're also just really fun. So uh, we've got, yeah, this you can see it's got four propellers and it can fly up to about 120 metres up. Uh, and then we can use it uh, to take pictures, to fly around. You can set it to GPS points so it'll control the landscape and, and generally give us an exact picture. One of the main things that I've been looking at uh, through, probably throughout the last 10 years is um, childhood in the past. Um, children have tended to be overlooked in archaeology, um, seen as sort of passive and dependent and not really very important. So the first thing we do when we're looking at the remains of children is to figure out how old they were when they died. So to do this uh, we look at dental development, that's the most accurate method because even if the child is unwell or stressed in any way the teeth will still continue growing at a regular rate. The, the, the exciting thing about this is, is applying this isotopic technique that basically archaeologists have taken from environmental scientists, geologists, geochemists to, to apply to, to, to humans and it's because the different chemical elements in your skeleton, uh, in your food, in your drink have what we call different isotope ratios and these isotope ratios vary depending 
on a whole range of things. You can look at a whole landscape simply on a computer screen, mark all the areas or the potential sites and then go out and check them out. Check them out. And the difference this has made to Middle Eastern archaeology is simply, it is simply astronomical. And I personally really enjoyed the museum side of it, so I have actually chosen to stay on at Durham doing my MA museum studies. Um, and from that I can go into the areas where we did a lot of looking at how museums interacted with archaeology and the communities. And so now that's an area that I'm actually going to pursue. Or looking at um, the archaeological heritage in places like Syria and Libya. Uh, and trying to preserve them uh, alongside this terrible process of their destruction. Or whether we're looking at uh, migrations uh, uh, right across Eurasia, a uh, particular time when migration is not only such a, a political issue, but also a you know, personal and social issue for so many people in Europe. It's really important that we're, we're working on these things. We're trying constantly to, to make relevant what we are doing because it's, it's quite easy to you know create this sort of ivory towers environment in which we as academics are getting this research funding and we're doing this really micro research and we're not sharing it enough but we as a department stand for the complete opposite we want to share our research certainly at academic conferences internationally on the on the international stage but it's vital to our existence that we share the stories that we're producing both about the past and the present with, a, with as wide a public as possible but we genuinely believe in that kind of, of relevance of our work in, in the world today.